Dark chocolate is one of the things that is really beneficial for helping with depression. It boosts our endorphins and our dopamine, Mm -hmm. but you need the 70% or greater. So you can get the raw cacao or 100%, but you don't have to eat completely bitter chocolate to get the benefits. Welcome to Becoming Virtuosa, the podcast with Dr. Susan Crockett. You are listening to episode number 63, Healthy Holiday Peppermint Bark. Happy holidays, y'all. Please join me in welcoming back our amazing guest chef and licensed intuitive eating dietitian, Sam Blumenthal, RDN. Today, we are featuring a healthy and easy holiday dessert for you and your loved ones. Enjoy! Welcome to Becoming Virtuosa, the podcast that encourages you to become your best virtuosa self. Each week, Dr. Susan Crockett goes where the scalpel can't reach, exploring conversations about how to be, heal, love, give, grow, pray, and attune. For the first time ever, she's bringing the personal one-on-one teaching that she shares with individual patients to you on this broader platform, a weekly source of inspiration and encouragement designed to empower you. By evolving ourselves as individuals, we influence and transform the world around us. Please help me welcome board-certified OBGYN specializing in minimally invasive GYN surgery, internationally in the top 1% of all GYN robotic surgeons, a certified life coach, and U.S. News top doctor, your host, Susan A. Crockett, MD. Well, hey, you guys, welcome back. Happy holidays. Welcome to the Dr. Crockett Show. Welcome to the kitchen with us. I know, again, this wasn't supposed to be a kitchen show, like cooking show somehow, The Dr. Crockett Show has turned into all kinds of fun, sweet things. And today, I'm super excited to welcome back our very popular and amazing guest, Sam Blumenthal. Sam, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. It feels like home here. Oh, that's Mm -hmm. one of the nicest things you could say. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a fun place, isn't it? It's incredible. Well, you've helped make it that way. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys haven't checked out the first episode we did, it was the first kitchen show that we did actually with Sam. You should really check it out. It was the collagen episode. We aired it on Halloween. We made a bone broth, which was absolutely to die for. And it's been our most popular segment of the show yet. So that's super cool. But today we're kind of taking like a shift, I would say, because we're going towards something a little less savory, a lot more sweet. A whole lot more sweet. Uh And these are, I'm really excited to make this together. We're going to be making a what would be your official name for this? I, how about healthy holiday peppermint bark? Yes, I love it. A healthy holiday peppermint bark that's super simple, nutrient dense, and incredibly delicious. It is. I've tried some already. Uh-huh. We had to test it just to make sure it was okay before the show. Yeah. And we're doing a little bit of like maybe like a food network swap or like a cooking show swap because it does take some time to kind of set in the freezer. So, what's also special about this recipe is it's no bake. And I'm sure during nice. the holiday times, if your family is anything like mine, you have things on the stovetop, in the oven. This is something that you can really get kind of out of the way a little bit quicker without the use of, of so many other appliances. And without so many ingredients. Even yeah. if you have kids or dogs in the way, y'all can't see this, but our co-stars are on set with us. I have Ollie right here next to me. Don't or, y'all worry. You're always like, where is Ollie? He's right here. And then Topher, who's Sam's special dog is with us today too so boy so even with like kids and dogs and pets and everything going on this is a super easy recipe to make we wanted to emphasize just the slowing down and giving yourself grace and we thought it would be really fun to have something that was satisfying and made you feel good and still didn't require just a tremendous amount of effort we want you to be able to slow down and enjoy your family too and they are going to enjoy this as well. Uh-huh. Just make sure it's... if you do have dogs around, we are using chocolate today. Oh, yeah. So just Good make PSA. sure you're, yeah, you're clean with your process or maybe they're outside or in a different space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Mm-hmm. Sam, why don't you start by telling us the rest of the ingredients beside the chocolate? Awesome. So our ingredients today, we're going to be using some dark chocolate, a kind of a combination of 70%, and also we'll do some sem- semi-sweet. Okay. The cool part about this recipe is you can truly pick whatever kind of percentage of cocoa you're looking for or cacao that you're looking for, but we're doing a nice combination of 70% and semi-sweet today, and we'll get into a little bit more of the health benefits in a moment. We're also going to be using some Greek yogurts, vanilla, 
peppermint. What else do we have? These are some of my sweet chocolate chips, pomegranate, pomegranate seeds, seeds, and a little bit of lemon orange zest we'll be using too. So perhaps these are all ingredients that you probably already have. Did you mention those? I did mention them. We'll oh, mention them again. Though, I missed them. super important. Yeah. We're going to be using so much peppermint, chocolate, fruits, proteins, heart-healthy fats to create something that is so flavorful, nutrient-dense, and delicious. I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how do we start? Awesome. So the first thing that you do want to get uh, started before you begin all of your cooking processes is we're going to be working on melting our chocolate in a double boiler. Yes. And I have a very fancy double boiler. Please note. So we got to the cooking segment today. I realized I don't have a real double boiler. So I hacked it, which is what you can do too. So we have a big stock pot that has about this much water in it. The water is about up to here in the stock part. Stock hot. We want it to heat up enough to create steam. And then you can either use a metal mixing bowl or what I used is a frying pan that fits over this. You just want something that fits over the top of it so that the steam comes up from below and is actually going to melt our chocolate. So it's going to be an indirect heat. So we're not actually burning the chocolate. So yeah, burnt chocolate. That. No good. No, not good at all. We no. want to get that going before we begin our chopping process. So in here, we have a combination of 70% dark chocolate and also our semi-sweet chocolate as well. Cool. And so while you're chopping, I'm yeah. going to talk about the health benefits. We can That's kinda... awesome. I love that. So in my practice, I'm a GYN surgeon for y'all that don't know me. We deal a lot with different types of depression, postpartum depression, PMS, PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It's basically the depression that goes along with our cycles. Sometimes a seasonal affective disorder, which we're going to talk a little bit more about today. So chocolate. In fact, dark chocolate is one of the things that is really beneficial for helping with depression. It boosts our endorphins and our dopamine, mm -hmm. but you need the 70% or greater. So you can get the raw cacao or 100%, but you don't have to eat completely bitter chocolate to get the benefits. So today we're using mostly the 70% for the base bark. Yes. And I mean, that's really important because if we're not feeling satisfied by what it is that we're enjoying, it's very difficult to feel, if we're not feeling like emotionally satisfied. It's very difficult to feel also physically satisfied. Yeah. So we want the addition of all these health benefits from the 70% dark, but kind of for some, depending on your taste buds, flavor profiles, food, pre food preferences, maybe just a straight up 70% dark chocolate's not really going to be your cup of tea, so to speak. So that's why we want to get a combination of some of the sweeter flavors too. But if you're somebody who loves bitter chocolate, you 70% or greater for this yeah, one. 96. Go for it. Uh huh. Do you want me to give like the measurement of what we're using here today? Sure. Or is that going to be great? Okay. We have three chocolate bars. So this was about they're 12. Two, they're ounces. two ounces each. Oh, no. I'm sorry. You're right. It's okay. We, yeah. We're using 12 ounces of chocolate. <laughs> so each of those bars, if my math is correct and I'm yes. mathing correctly, each of them are four ounces yep. of chocolate. Yes. Nice. So do you want to take this uh, right over here? Sure. This has already been heating up for about 10 minutes or so. Oh, look at it just melting right away. That's so cool. So we're going to post the recipe on our recipe blog. You can go to drcrockett.com. That's drcrockett.com slash recipes. This is one that we are going to be linking there, and we'll put a link of that in the show notes on the podcast and the YouTube video for you as well. Well, that's melting pretty quickly. So you guys are going to want to make sure you have a little towel to wipe down the condensation on the bottom of this. And then my counters are granite, so we're going to set right on it. But if you have a counter that is not heat proof you need to put a heat pad down and we just wanted to mention that sam was stirring this the whole time you just want to keep it moving so that it all melts really evenly oh that looks amazing you get this nice like gloss to it this really kind of like silky smooth texture we're going to use to pour right into a little either like a lift baking sheet we're going to be using a baking dish today Kind of also depending on the size of your freezer, we have limited space today, so we're going to yeah. keep it a little bit smaller. So we actually might have some leftovers to make for another time. Yeah. But just kind of keep in mind and be mindful of how much freezer space you have, because as I mentioned at the start, this is a no-bake recipe, but we do need enough time for uh, everything to get nice and settled in the freezer. And so I'm going to hold it this way if you wouldn't yeah, mind. Just kind of. All right. So now I'm just going to guide this into the pan, and it is on parchment paper. Not wax paper. You want to make sure you use parchment paper. I'm going to turn it this way so y'all can see. There we go. Then we just want to smooth it mm -hmm. and just cover the base of it because that's going to be the base of your peppermint bark. I've never made this before. 
I can't believe I've never made this before. It's so simple. It's one of my favorites. Awesome. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, okay. and we'll just spread like a nice thin, even layer. Yeah, mm. this pan seems about right. I think if you put it in a bigger pan, it would be a thinner bark, but it doesn't look like... Which kind of brings up a really great point. Like this recipe is really designed to focus on variety, like variety in terms of the ingredients that you want to add to it. We're going to get a little creative today by adding in that pomegranate seed and also zest some clementines Mm -hmm. right over it. You can use oranges too. But if you want to add any like pistachios, pistachios or any kind of like your favorite delicious like your favorite nuts or seeds there's so much room for variety in customizing this not only in terms of the ingredients you add but also the thickness of it as well so as you mentioned if we had like a larger pan this would be a little bit thinner and if that's your cup of tea awesome but if you want something with a little bit more body and thickness i'd we'd recommend using like a smaller more compact dish great just want to try to get a nice even layer super we're going to pop it in the freezer for 10 minutes while we start preparing all of our other ingredients that are going to go on top Great. So now we're going to begin with our yogurt. We're going to be using a Greek yogurt today, super rich in protein. And protein is really going to help with that sensation of feeling satisfied. Right. And because this is Greek yogurt too, we're going to get some great probiotics. They're going to be really great for gut health and digestion. Mm -hmm. We talk about that a lot on the show about how half of our, probably more than that, of our dopamine and our emotional well-being is being... (laughs) Emotional well-being comes from gut health in the gut flora. Mm -hmm. So this is perfect. Yeah. Using a little natural probiotic here. And in addition to that, we have like 70 to 90% of our whole immune system in our gut. That's right. So by feeding it with some great gut bacteria, we can really take care of our gut health. So we're adding in just a a little bit of vanilla just to help sweeten this a little bit more. This is just a plain Greek yogurt. We'll give that a nice little mix. Okay, so we added a little vanilla in just for a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. So you guys know that most of the time on the show, we talk about whole food plant-based diets. This may be an exception if you're choosing to add some dairy products. Yogurt is great not only for the protein that you mentioned, but also for vitamin D and for calcium. And there are plant substitutes you can do if you need. Yeah. So if you wanted to go for like a coconut based yogurt, that is a really delicious and fulfilling choice. We're also talking about like an, an almond base. Oh, I love the almond yogurt. I've never had the almond yogurt oh, before. So good. But I'm an almond freak. Like, uh-huh. have you ever had marzipan growing up? No. No? Mm-mm. Oh my gosh. So my grandparents, this is a really fun story for because I love remembering my relatives during the holidays. Mm-hmm. So I had an Oma and Opa. And I have ornaments from my opa's Christmas tree from when he was a little boy in Germany. He immigrated to the United States, and he's actually one of the inspirations for me, my major inspiration for becoming a doctor. Mm -hmm. So he immigrated to the United States when he was a teenager and learned English and went through engineering school in New York. And I always thought that if he went through all of that to provide a better life for me, that I had an obligation to use my gifts to the best of my ability. So I just decided I was going to do as much as I could with what I had. And now that I do robotic surgery, I I always joke that all my grandmothers were seamstresses Mm -hmm. and my grandfathers were engineers. And that's how I became a robotic surgeon. That's really beautiful. (laughs) I love that. Yeah. But one of the stories he used to always tell us about was in their stockings in, he lived in Northern Germany, almost, well, it was Denmark back and forth. Oranges in the wintertime were extremely rare. And so things that we take for granted, like pomegranate, these were extraordinary treats, the figs, the dates. Mm -hmm. And so we still to this day put nuts and an orange and an apple in the bottom of our stockings for Christmas. That's so beautiful. Isn't that fun? And to just have that gentle reminder that food, again, like, yes, it's (laughs) fuel and yes, it's medicine. It's also nostalgia and love and, and joy family, yeah. family and connection. And that's such a beautiful story. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I had not even intended to bring that up today, but I think it's a, a great way to integrate what we're, we're doing because we're maybe building some new family memories today for our generation and uh, the future generations. So uh, it's nice to incorporate those things. While I'm holding this, let's yeah. talk a little bit about the benefits of citrus. 
Love it so much. So with citrus, there's actually some overlap between the pomegranate seeds that we're going to be using and citrus, a really rich source of vitamin C. And this is a huge callback to our previous episode together with collagen. Right. Vitamin C is really excellent for our bodies because it helps with our own internal production of, of collagen. collagen. And it's so pretty. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then we also have the ability to use it as a great way to pair with collagen that we maybe get from supplements or even from the bone broth that we made in order for our body to best absorb, digest, and utilize collagen. It likes to be paired. We work together with vitamin C. And so today we're pairing some of the bitter chocolate with a little bit more of the sweet citrus. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for a source of vitamin C that's not coming from something sweet, we can also find vitamin C in dark leafy greens as well. Great. Like Um, spinach we had for lunch today. Exactly. Uh, What else is a dark leafy green that like Brussels sprouts qualify? A little bit of vitamin C will have some kale Kale. in there too, arugula. And I mean, my favorite, if you haven't noticed, this is my favorite beet tattoo. The tops of beet beet leaves, the greens. I do. Yeah. Those are going to be really rich in vitamin C as well. Mm -hmm. Beet tops. Yeah. Well, we have just a couple minutes, I think, for our chocolate that's in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I think we have time to talk about the benefits of peppermint. Let's hear it. Okay, this has so much, y'all. I started thinking about the chocolate, of course, and I can rattle those off, but the peppermint, I really hadn't put it all together until I looked it up. I got to read it for y'all. Y'all are going to crack up, especially since I'm a gynecologist. So the benefits of peppermint, it's used for the common cold, cough, inflammation of the mouth and throat, sinus infections, and other respiratory infections. It's also used for digestive problems, including heartburn, right? Do you ever have somebody say they just needed a peppermint? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I never thought about that much. It's used for heartburn, nausea, vomiting, morning sickness. Hello, all our pregnant patients. Irritable bowel syndrome, cramps of the upper gastrointestinal tract, which is stomach, bile ducts, which is your liver and your gallbladder, bacterial overgrowth of the small intestine, and gas. So they're talking about abnormal bacteria overgrowth in the small intestine are... Lactobacillus that's in our yogurt is replacing it with the good bacteria. So this the peppermint's not counteracting this. It's getting rid of the ones that the lactobacillus need to replace. Oh, there's more though. Some people also use peppermint for menstrual problems, preventing spasms during endoscopy procedures, fevers, headaches to reduce stomach bloating after surgery, and as a stimulant. Peppermint oil is applied to the skin for headache, muscle pain, nerve pain, toothache, inflammation of the mouth, joint conditions, bad breath, menopausal symptoms, hot flashes during treatment for breast cancer. This is hitting women's health so much. Itchiness of the skin during pregnancy, otherwise known as pups. Hives for repelling mosquitoes, for reducing plaque, and for reducing nipple discomfort during breastfeeding. I bet babies really like it too. People use peppermint oil to relax the colon. (laughs) Some people inhale it for treating symptoms of cough and colds and to reduce stress and improve mental sharpness. What I love so much about the use of peppermint for our cooking today is I love using like peppermint cane Mm -hmm. because it's very like symbolic of holiday time. And if this is a recipe that you want to make when it's not the holiday time, even just using like peppermint leaves or like peppermint oil drops too, right. um, just to get that flavor in there, or maybe even a pop of grain in this recipe. Our intention for using the peppermint candy is to also invite in that sense of just joy and nostalgia too, while getting some of the peppermint in there as well. But if this is a recipe that you're looking to make uh, while it's not holiday time, and maybe you don't have, or we don't have like access to our peppermint candy canes, just using like Mint leaf would be excellent. It'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Now what do we do with those? Okay. So while our chocolate is still setting, I think we just have a couple more minutes. Uh, That chocolate just needs to set for about 10. We're going to take a rolling pin and whatever aggression you've had from this holiday (laughs) season, you can really take out (laughs) on the peppermint. So I'm letting you do this. Yeah. (laughs) So you can like roll it out or sometimes what I like to do is you can just kind of, yeah. Oh, that's very satisfying yeah let's see if you guys can see this here we go it's harder than you think a lot easier to do it this way it's just a lot of pieces all over the place right a lot of powder you want some? and sure and with this i like to create a little bit of variety in terms of the size of pieces oh. too so we can get like some of like the dusting that's happening but also i, I like when some of the peppermint is whole Chunky. because it gives like a nice little mouth feel and texture like all your holiday blues go away right yeah 
not just the health benefits of what we're making too. It's like the therapeutic benefit of just <laughs> the whole cooking process. And if you're doing this with kids, it might be just a fun thing to do, but make sure they're supervised. <laughs> Some so yeah. Hey, so there's our chilled bark. Boy, that was fast. So fast. Yeah. Cool. It you might it still might be like a little like silky to the touch, but that's totally fine because all we're doing is adding in our Greek yogurt, some of our toppings, and it's actually going to go back in the freezer for about two hours. Which we're um, going to magically speed through. Exactly. Okay. Uh, but this is what it should look like. <laughs> cool. And so when you line your parchment, I want you to put a little bit more parchment along the side so it's easier to pick up. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Okay. So now we're spreading the yogurt out on the chocolate. Yeah. And this is an opportunity for you to also get as creative as you want. If you want a really thin layer, you just get to control the thickness or the thinness. So I like to have a thicker layer of chocolate. That's my choice. (laughs) More chocolate, please. Awesome. Let's cover a little bit here. So it, this is going to freeze, and that's what's going to make the yogurt hard. But mm-hmm. this isn't something that you want to put in somebody's Christmas stocking because now nah, you're going to have a lot to clean up. It'll melt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the kind of the caveat of this is you need to serve it straight from the freezer so that it stays hard because it'll melt when it stays out, and it will store up to two weeks between parchment paper in the freezer. Although mine is not expected to last more than about two hours, I think mm-hmm. two minutes. There's no way it's lasting two weeks. Come on, let's be honest. Let's be real. <laughs> so, I'll let you do the honors. It smells so good. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just sprinkle that on top. Okay, here goes our peppermint. Oh my goodness, that's so beautiful. It smells so good. It's already cleared up my sinuses. Okay, I'll get a little bit of our chocolate chips. Lovely. So, these are the semi sweet, mm-hmm. the little mini mm-hmm. morsels. They're so cute. Yeah, you can also do cacao nibs too if you want more magnesium. Oh, I forgot about magnesium in the chocolate, mm-hmm. right? Really great for heart health and blood flow and muscle cramping as well. That's why we like it around the PMS time, right? 100%. And if you want to help me, if I'm going to get my hands red, you're going to get your hands <laughs> red. Okay. <laughs> oh, so we're going to with some of these pomegranate the seeds, pom- too. Mm-hmm. The red is so festive. I haven't used pomegranates in my holiday cooking before very much. Well, we can also add to this beautiful dish for a little bit more of a pop of color to get kind of the red and green vibe going. Is some mint leaves, but I don't know if we have mint leaves today. I have some. You do? Yes, I just happen to have some, and I really hadn't planned it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, look. This wow. was set up from our lunch. Incredible. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Yeah, so... I was going to use it for our tea, and then we ended up having pomegranate juice instead. Amazing. Look at this. We have a pop of green, so much mint. Oh, it smells so freshness. good. Freshness. This is going to go in the refrigerator for two hours. You're so much better than I am at this. Well, what I love so much about kind of this like teamwork process today is that we have an opportunity to infuse our energy into what we're making. And yeah. if we are coming into the kitchen, and if y'all are, are watching this and want to create this or any kind of recipe that you're making at home, whatever energy you're bringing forth to this space will go directly into what you are creating. I love that. And if You taught me that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and if it's like that cheery, kind of positive, exciting energy, like that's going straight into the dish. Though in, in my personal experience, sometimes the holiday time can be a little stressful and sometimes that inner light yeah feels like a touched in a little dim so like holiday blues or if you're like me i suffer from seasonal affective disorder or sad that's something that is due to the shorter days during the winter months and Mm -hmm. i've had it since a kid i always kind of get the funk i am very dependent on the sunlight Mm -hmm. so we talk about in our medical practice about things that we can naturally do to help prevent depression or blues or and of course if you're really suffering from depression please go see your doctor and you know there are medications that are available that are wonderful but we're going to talk a little bit about just some natural things so chocolate for sure Mm -hmm. the orange we talked about so citrus is helpful Mm -hmm. sunlight so if you live in a place where you don't get much sunlight try to get out first thing in the morning and get at least 10 minutes of sunlight when the sun is coming up if you can't there are sunlight lamps that you can buy And I find those helpful because it helps extend the exposure of the sunlight into your eyes. Exercise is great. Sex, if you're able to have some, you know, Mm -hmm. great. So those things all increase your dopamine and help with depression. So in lieu of not having a sexual partner right now because I'm single, 
I'm going to have some peppermint bark. I'm going to have a lot of peppermint bark. <laughs> um, so with that too, like as you're creating your recipe, if you notice, you know, that what might feel like a negative energy, mm-hmm. rather than using this as a way to absorb that negative energy, how can we reframe that? Right. How can we transform or recreate something that might feel negative when the sun's out, when the sun's not out, et cetera, into something fulfilling and enriching and energizing. And so whatever energy you bring into the space, into the kitchen, know that is welcome. It requires that moment to create a pause and say, okay, what's showing up for me? Is this something I want to transfer? Or maybe this is something I want to transform. I love that idea. So we're transforming the dark days of winter and the holiday blues that come after everybody's gone and all the packages are open into something joyful and beautiful that we're full of gratitude for. I love it. We added a little bit of salt too, to kind of offset some of the bitterness and bring out a little bit more of the sweetness. And we're going to pop this in the freezer for two full hours. Two hours. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Whoa. Oh, two hours later. Two hours later. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is magic. And a different sheet. <laughs> It looks so pretty, and it doesn't have green on it. <laughs> so we're going to add a little bit of our mint. Does and this we'll, one have salt on it? Yes. Okay. And then we're also going to get a little bit of orange zest, too, or a clementine zest, just to yeah, get a little bit more pop of color. Get all the colors. It smells so good. The flavors meld so nicely. I think the point that you were making earlier about how the vitamin C and the magnesium, all the things that we eat work together to help increase our collagen and our health is super important Mm -hmm. because especially in in the way we think in Western culture, we think one thing that we take does one thing, like you take an antibiotic, it makes the bacteria go away. But when it comes to our food and our body's chemistry, it's a whole lot more complicated than that and things are additive. So that's the other thing I really like about this recipe. It's all sorts of goodness in here. Oh, that's pretty. Ready? You ready to break break a piece? I have a little bit. Yeah, sure. Have to try some. Amazing, incredible! You are amazing. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show. And let's try a piece. So, yeah, when you're ready to break it, honestly, it's just like a. It's helpful when you have the parchment paper that's sticking up on the edge. Do you need a knife? Yeah, I have one right here, actually. Just like this. So this is kind of the consistency we're looking for. And then I love seeing that layer too. Lovely. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Happy holidays, you guys. I hope you have a safe and happy holidays. And may all your wishes come through. And we will see you next episode, which is actually mocktails. We're doing uh, alcohol-free, really amazing drinks next week. Delicious. Just in time for New Year's. So mm-hmm. join us for the next episode. Thank you for being here. Bye, all. y'all. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Becoming Virtuosa. To learn more, come visit us at drcrockett.com. That's drcrockett with two T's.com. Or find us on YouTube for The Dr. Crockett Show. If you found this episode helpful or think it might help someone else, please like, subscribe, and share. This is how we grow together. Thanks, and I'll see you next week. Love always, Sue.